Uh, welcome to the workshop. Uh, this is intended to be hands-on, so if you're wanting to follow along, go ahead and go to this, this link, either via the QR code or the, the link up there, and uh, download the repo, and then run Docker Compose up in the root of the repo. You'll be deploying a system that we will use uh, to build some Grafana dashboards and explore traces. Uh, I don't know how slow the Wi-Fi is here, so go ahead and kick it off now, and uh, you'll be ready when we're ready. All right, so the, the workshop's called Analyzing and Visualizing Open Telemetry Traces with SQL. Uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to drop some traces in a database and see what we can see. I'm John Pruitt. I'm an engineer at Timescale working on the PromScale product. Um, PromScale is a back end for Prometheus metrics and open telemetry traces. And this is a preview of what we're going to build today. Uh, the system you're going to deploy, um, which I should say, the, the postcards on the table have the link as well, the QR code, so uh, if you missed it before, you can catch up. Uh, we're going to deploy a system that's going to generate traces, uh, no metrics, no logs, and we're going to build some Grafana dashboards using that data. This, this slide right here is focusing on the time series aspect of traces. And then we're also going to do a second dashboard that focuses on the tree structure of traces and the topology of the system. Yes? Uh, so, the repo actually has two different versions. Uh, the question was, are these manual traces or automatic? Uh, today we're going to use the um, manual version, so the code is instrumented manually. There's also a, a version in the repo that uses only auto-instrumentation. And please feel free to ask questions as we go. So what we're going to do, first we're going to talk about the demo system, just what, uh, make sure you understand what you just deployed. Um, then we're going to talk a bit about tracing background just to make sure we understand enough to write SQL. Uh, then we're going to build a dashboard using the time series aspect of tracing. Then we're going to build a second dashboard focusing on the tree structures and then wrap up. The demo system, again, here's the link, pull it down. It all runs in Docker. That's all you need. Um, I'll leave it up there for a second. When you get to the repo, you know, you hit the code button. You can either use git clone, download it as a zip. Also want to note that there is a workshop.md file in the root with um, notes. So basically everything I'm going to talk about is, is recorded in that, that markdown file as well. So if you fall behind or if later on you want to revisit and dig in a little deeper, you can consult that. Operating the demo system. Once you get it downloaded, uh, just Docker Compose up, starts it. I like to run it detached. If you want to pause it, but not remove it, Docker Compose stop, and Docker Compose start, starts it back up. And if you want to get rid of it entirely, Docker Compose down. So what are you deploying? We've implemented a an absurd password generator. Um, the point of this is not to build a good password generator, it's to emit interesting traces. So what we have are four services that each uh, return a random character. So the lower service um, serves up lowercase characters, upper, uppercase, digit, digits, and special, special case. Then we have a generator system that uses those other services to produce a random generated password. And finally, we've got a load script that just continuously exercises the system, and we're running three replicas of that. And each of these services, with the exception of the load generator, uh, is instrumented with open telemetry libraries to emit traces. Also in Docker, we've got an observability stack. Uh, the traces flow into the open telemetry collector first. That's not strictly necessary, but it's in the box to play with. Right now it's configured only to do batching, uh, no sampling. 
those, uh, the collector then forwards those traces to the prom scale connector, which puts them in the prom scale database, which is a time scale Postgres database. Also in the box, you've got Grafana and Jaeger, all configured to look at the database to uh, explore traces. If you want to connect directly to the database, uh, it's on localhost local 5999. Uh, the database name is Hotel Demo, uh, or you can jump directly onto the database container and use the client installed there. Grafana is at localhost 3000, Jaeger is at localhost 16.686, and each of the services are also exposed, so you can poke them independently if you want. So just to show you, we've got uh, Grafana here, got Jaeger, we can jump in and find traces with Jaeger. Um, and also, you know, this is the password service, so I can poke that and try that again. There we go. All right, so let's do some tracing background uh, just to make sure we all are on the same page and have a good foundation. Uh, we have to understand the data model, um, to understand how to answer questions about our system and how to write the SQL. So first of all, a trace is a collection of spans and a span can have one or uh, zero or more children. So in that way, a trace is a tree structure. A trace is also a time series. So uh, you know, each span has a start time, it has an end time and therefore a duration. And each parent span encompasses all of its children. So span one is a parent, span two and span six are its children. The start and end times of them fall within the uh, time span of the parent. Uh, so you're, you're probably familiar with looking at a trace in Jaeger, right? You go over to Jaeger, you can see the tree structure over here by the nested spans, and you can see the time, spirit, time series aspect over here with the Gantt chart. Uh, the length of the lines here is the duration, and you also get the start and end times. So this is, this is cool, and this is a powerful tool, but you typically you're only looking at one trace at a time. So the cool thing about SQL and what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a few thousand traces at a time and see what we can, what we can glean from that that's you know, hard to do looking at a single trace at a time. So also let's look at the perspective uh, from the code side. This is a, a function in one of the services we deployed is, is Python. Uh, you can see on line 37, we create a span and give it a name. That span has a context and the beginning of the context and the end of the context will determine the start time and the end time. You can attach attributes to a span. You can attach events to a span, which are just point in time markers. Uh, and a span can have child spans. So right here we've created a span with a different name. It's a child of the one that wraps it. It has its own start and end time that is contained within the parent span. And finally, uh, you can record exceptions on the span. So this is just to give you kind of a sense of what this looks like in code and how to translate uh, what we see in the SQL with you know, what you would see on the code side. The other thing I want to mention here is, again, like this is not a great password generator. It's created to make interesting traces. And so these calls to work are intentionally slowing down the code just to make interesting data. And we've got you know, random exceptions being uh, purposefully emitted as well. So the tracing spec, let's say we wanted to ingest these, these traces. This is a, a screenshot of the protobuf definition for a trace. There's a lot there. It would take us all day to do this, probably more. So we're not gonna do that. That's why we're uh, piggybacking on PromScale, which has done the hard work for us. So PromScale is gonna land this data in a Postgres database in a number of tables. But today we're gonna to focus on only one view, and that's the span view. So each row in the span view corresponds with 
a single span, right? Uh, and many traces will be represented in this view. The, the view has many columns as well, and we're only gonna look at eight of them. And I think you'll be surprised at just how much um, value we can get out of eight columns. Each span has a span ID and a trace ID. All of the spans belonging to a given trace will share the same trace ID, but each span will have its own span ID. And so the combination of a trace ID and a span ID uniquely identifies a span. The service name column, unsurprisingly, gives you the name of the service that emitted the span. The span name corresponds to the name you give the span when you create it, which is typically like a function name or some sort of operation. The start time, end time, and duration, that's the time series aspect of a span. And the, using the trace ID and the parent span ID, uh, you can find the parent and therefore you get the tree structure of a span, of a trace. So speaking of the tree, spru tree structure, uh, I wanted to elaborate on that last point. You've got the span ID and the parent span ID on each span and the child's parent span ID points to the parent's span ID. Um, saying that sounds weird, so for me, a visual helps. The other thing to note here is that the, each trace is gonna have a single root, and the root's parent span ID is null. That's how we identify the root. All right, so next we're, gonna, we're going to uh, build a dashboard. We got through all of the, uh, the boring part. Now we're ready to do some fun stuff. So get this picture back in your mind. Uh, time span, um, start, end dates, durations. Um, what we're going to do in Grafana, you know, Grafana has this time picker in the UI right here. Uh, we're going to have to use that in our SQL. Um, so Grafana gives you a start time and an end time using that UI filter. And what we're gonna do is compare the start times of the span to that time window that we've selected. And so, as you can imagine, uh, some spans will be fully contained in that window, some will overlap, and some will, not, will be excluded from the window. Um, and note that that's true within a trace. So if this were a trace, some spans would from the trace would be included and some would be excluded. It's just something to keep in mind. Any questions so far? Okay. So in Grafana, there's a macro called a dollar underscore underscore time filter. You can use that to tie your queries to that uh, UI widget. And the way we're gonna do that is in the where clause, we'll use time filter and we're gonna filter on the start time. That expands to something that looks like this, where the start time is between the begin and the end of the filter that we've selected. If you wanna query directly against Postgres without Grafana, uh, the way you would do something like that is where the start time is greater than now minus an interval of 15 minutes. That'll give you all the spans in the last 15 minutes. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is build this widget. So go over to Grafana, sorry, excuse me. Uh, go to Browse, there's a demo folder. And remember, Grafana's on localhost 3000. In the demo fo folder are a number of dashboards. The ones we're gonna use for the workshop are workshop one, workshop one finished, workshop two, and workshop two finished. Um, so what I've done is workshop one and workshop one finished are copies of one another. In workshop one, uh, all of the queries are commented out. We're gonna talk about each one and we will uncomment them and enable them as we go. Workshop one is finished. Uh, workshop one finished, everything's enabled. So if you wanna cheat, <laughs> just go to the finished one. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, so the first time you log in, it's gonna ask for a username and password. It's admin, admin. It's gonna prompt you to set a new password. You can use whatever you want, I always use admin. Uh, I should have mentioned that, thank you. 
You in there now? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so we jump into workshop one, and you should see something that looks like this, and nothing's working, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to enable this, this panel right over here that says number of traces in the time window. And when we do, it's going to look something like this. So behind this panel is one query. The query is going to look at the span view that we've been talking about. It's going to use the macro from Grafana to filter on the time window. And we're going to filter where the parent span ID is null. And as I mentioned before, the root span of every trace has a null parent span ID. So basically what we're saying is give me all of the root spans in this time window that we've selected. And why is that important? We know that every trace has a single root span. So by counting the number of root spans in the time window, we know the number of traces in the time window, right? So go, go back to Grafana, hit edit on the panel, and you should see some comments in the SQL. Take those comments out, hit apply, and you should see a number come up. So right now I've got my filter set to five minutes. In the last five minutes, there are 100 and, uh, sorry, 712 traces. Again, this is a terrible password generator. It's horribly slow <laughs> on purpose. Everybody good there? Okay. Uh, I should also say we're going to start with easy queries and work our way up. So each one builds on the next. So next we're going to do throughput. We're going to build a panel that looks like this. So if we know uh, every trace has a single root span and we don't have sampling turned on, we know that every trace corresponds with a request, we can compute the throughput in the system by counting spans over time, right? Or counting traces, sorry, over time. So you'll note that the, the query here is using the span view again, the same filters that we used from the last query. This time we're going to count traces as well, but now we're gonna group it into time buckets of 10 seconds. Um, we're using a, a function from time scale DB called time bucket. Uh, you could do this with standard SQL functions like date, date trunk, time book, bucket is just more powerful and flexible. Uh, so if we group by time and order by time, what we're gonna see for a five minute window is 10 second slices where we count. We get a count for each 10, 10 second slice. All right, so jump over here. We're gonna go to the throughput panel right here. Edit. I didn't want you all to have to type, so we're gonna make this easy and just uncomment out the, the comments there and hit apply. So what do we see here? We see that, at least on my system, I had a peak of 46 traces in a 10 second window in the last five minutes, and I've seen as few as five. So already, we know that there is variability in the throughput of the system over time. And if I scroll back out to, say, 15 minutes, we see a pattern even more uh, clearly, right? There are periods of time where the throughput is high and period of time, periods of time where the throughput is low. Um, I don't know how you would get that from Jaeger, right? So we, we just looked at you know, 1,500 traces and we've, we've already found a pattern in our system. We're gonna look at the slowest traces in the time window. So we're gonna take the same exact query as before, the same filter logic. Uh, this time we're not gonna do any aggregations, we're just gonna get the distinct trace IDs and their durations. And by ordering by the duration descending and getting a limit of 10, we're gonna get the 10 slowest traces in the time window. Uh, so jump back over here. It's top left, enable the query, and hit apply. 
So we can see now, like in the last 15 minutes, the worst requests latency was 7.2 seconds. Pretty terrible, right? Uh, so this is one place where, you know, Jaeger could help. You could go grab these trace IDs of the top 10 worst and go look at them, try to figure out what's wrong. All right, so now we're going to look at a histogram of latencies. So we, we've seen uh, the throughput, we've seen the top 10 slowest ones, but the top 10 slowest one doesn't really give us a picture of, uh, you know, what are, the, what are the fastest ones look like? What do the average ones look like? Uh, so this histogram, what it's going to tell us is it's going to break our latencies down into a number of buckets and then count in those buckets for the entire time window. Uh, so this query is easy, you know, it's essentially the same one as the top 10 slowest. We're just not grabbing the slowest ones. We're grabbing all of them and handing them to Grafana. So enable that query. And hit apply. And so what does this tell us? It says for this 15 minute window, the vast majority of our requests are happening in, like, what is this bucket? Let's say, if this is 800 milliseconds, you know, the vast majority are happening under, under 800 milliseconds. But we're seeing this long tail that drags out to 8 seconds, basically. Um, so that's good to know. That paints another detailed picture of what our system looks like. Uh, one signal that a lot of people want to look at, especially SREs, are the P95 latencies. This, this tells us 95% um, of requests happen at or under this value, this, this amount of latency, right? And we're going to plot that over time. To do that, we're going to start with the same basic query we've been using all along. Uh, we're going to apply this time bucket to get the 10-second buckets. And then we're going to use a couple of time scale DB functions, percentile ag and approx percentile, to get the uh, P95 duration. You could, again, use standard SQL functions to do that. They'd just be a little less flexible and a little slower. And we're going to group by the time bucket and order by time, and that's going to give us P95 plotted over time. So jump in here, enable the query, and check it out. So now we know uh, not only does the throughput vary over time, but so does the latency, which makes sense, right? And they're pretty much the inverse of one another. When the throughput is high, the latency, the P95 latency is low, and vice versa. It didn't necessarily have to be the case, but the fact that it is is another um, uh, piece of information, another pattern that we see about the way our system runs. And again, this is just tracing data. So we, we generated a, a histogram of latency up here, right? It's for the entire 15 minute bucket, uh, which is useful, but it doesn't tell us if there's some variability in, in latency over time uh, beyond the 15, the, the P, P95. Uh, so now we're gonna build a histogram of latencies over time. And uh, what this essentially gives you is a, think of it as like, you have to kind of think in 3D, right? Because it's not only gonna give you the, the slowest and the fastest in each 10 second bucket. It's gonna give you the span, the, 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 the spread, and it will show you where most of, the, uh, most of the traces are landing within that spread. So the brighter the box, the, the more traces in that box, if that makes sense. Let's do the query first. Uh, again, very simple query. We're building on the same queries we've been doing. We're gonna use time bucket. We're gonna use the duration. And we're going to let Grafana um, 
build that heat map for us. Jump in here. Hit apply. And now, uh, so you can see right above the P95 latency. So that's only telling us, you know, essentially the slow, what the slow, um, slow requests look like. Now with this picture, we see for each vertical slice, uh, it broken down into buckets and the color corresponds with how many traces fall into that bucket, right? So we can see there's variability in, um, in the latencies and we can see the spread, right? Uh, looks kind of like a sine wave. What's wrong up here? That was aborted. Okay. Any questions? All right. Okay. So you may say, this is great. I know my system is slow and I know it's variably slow, but where do I go from there? You know, what if I want to nail this down to a, a service or an operation? Uh, how do I figure out where to go um, optimize first? So that's what we're going to build now. We're going to build this donut chart, this pie chart. What we're going to do is for every operation, which is like a function, uh, we're going to compute the, the amount of execution time that was spent in that operation for the 15 minute window, right? And you could say, okay, the, the function that's spending, that we're spending the most execution time in is the bottleneck. And that's where we should go spend our time optimizing. So we have this query. This one's going to be a little bit more advanced. Um, so go back to the thought. Each span has zero or more children. A parent span's time frame encompasses all of its children. So if we want to know how much time is spent in a span exclusive of its children, we have to subtract the child's duration from the parents, right? And that's going to get, let us pinpoint whether the time was spent in the parent or in the child. So what we've got here is the, the same view, the same filter. Uh, what we're going to do is concatenate the service name and the span name and call that our operation. And then we're going to sum the duration that's spent in the parent, and we're going to subtract out the sum of the durations of the direct children. So how do we do that? We do, we, we reference the same uh, view again. We're going to alias it as K for kids. Uh, we have to find where the child's trace ID is the same as the parent's trace ID, and where the child's parent span ID is this span's ID, right? So that's going to be all of the spans that are direct children of this span. Um, the time filter here is a performance optimization. So if we, we find all the direct children and sum their durations, subtract it from the parent's duration, we know how much time is spent in the parent excluding the children. So we're going to go over here, bottom left panel, edit, enable the query, and hit apply. Now this query is a little bit slower. Uh, we could optimize it, but uh, it would be harder to, to understand, so I left it slow. move it to five minutes instead of 15. Okay. So what do we see here? We see that in this five minute window, we spent 10.4 minutes of execution time in the digit service in the random digit operation, right? It vastly outstrips all of the, the rest of the system. So realize we're not just looking at one process not just looking at one service, we're looking at all five services. We're looking at 
you know, a thousand traces for five minute window. So, you know, maybe there are all different kinds of requests happening in that five minute window. And we've pinpointed a function that is our culprit. So with this panel alone, you, you've identified the bottleneck and you know exactly where to go to spend your time optimizing, right? That's pretty cool. So let's build a table with that data as well. You know, maybe uh, we also want to see the average and the P95 for each of those operations. We're going to use the exact same query to do that. All we're going to do is wrap it. So this is the query from the last panel. We're just going to wrap that in an outer query. And instead of just using the um, total execution time, we're going to average it and we're going to do the P95 of it. Go back to Grafana. And we're going to edit and enable this. All right, so we see that this table uh, verifies what we see in the pie chart. The digit service has a random digit uh, operation. On average, it's taking over a second to complete, at least on my laptop. And the P95 duration is 4.2 seconds. So not only is it slow on average, it's extremely slow in the slowest case. Um, we also see, you know, the next slowest operation is in the same service. It's the render digit. And, you know, the P95 of it is 363 milliseconds on my laptop. So between the two of these, you know where to go to look to uh, improve things. Now, one thing we don't see here is whether or not that varies over time. So let's go looking for another pattern. So we're going to build this. Uh, you can think of this as taking the pie graph and generating a pie graph every 10 seconds and plotting it as a stacked bar graph, right? So uh, we take the same query as before. We're doing the, um, the parent's duration excluding the sum of the direct children's durations. And we're going to use time bucket to plot that in 10 second time windows. Edit that, enable the query. All right, and I'm going to scale back out to 15 minutes. Okay, so that may just look like a bunch of colors at first, <laughs> but we can see that this orange uh, bar uh, is one, very big relative to the others, and also varies in size. There, there are times when the bar, the orange bar is large, and there are times when the orange bar is small. And if we scroll up, we can see that those, uh, the size of the orange bar corresponds with what we see in the histogram of latencies and the P95 latencies and the throughput. Um, so what is this orange bar? It is the random digit function from the digit service, unsurprisingly. Like that's what all of the pat patterns are pointing to, but we've just confirmed it. Uh, what else can we see? We can also see that occasionally this blue bar is tall and this red bar uh, you know, and those look periodic as well. We see the red bar is longer here, then it goes away, and it comes back here. Um, so what is that? The red one is the render digit from the digit service, which we saw right here. So while this confirms that render digit is a problem, this panel shows us that it's an intermittent problem. It's a periodic problem. It's not a constant problem. 
uh, what is this blue guy? The blue one is process digit, I believe. Uh, H generator get. That was hard to tell. In any case, we've we found two problems. We've now uh, correlated a given function with latency and throughput issues. And we can tell that they, uh, the second function is an intermittent problem that compounds things. So we have a Grafana dashboard now. We've used nothing but traces, no metrics, no logs. Uh, I don't know about you, but we started out with a very simple query and built upon it. So even the, the most advanced queries in here are understandable. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I think you get a lot of value out of this. Any question before we move on? Yeah. How would this account for sampling? So if you're using traces to generate a lot of these metrics, would that be inherently sampled from the application? Would that be potentially misleading? Yes. So the question is about sampling. Um, so remember, we've got the collector in our stack, right? And right now I've got sampling turned off. Are you doing some sort of like tail-based sampling? Uh, I'm not sampling at all. So, yeah, right. Yes, so theoretically, if you were sampling, um, throughput's actually obviously not gonna be throughput, right? You could actually, if you knew like you were doing 10% uh, samples or something, maybe you could multiply it, scale it up and get a approximation but it wouldn't be exact, right? Um, slowest traces, you know, you're gonna get the slowest of the sampled traces. So the more sampling you've got, the more imprecise these would be, but they should still be um, representative. But you do have to be careful because you wouldn't wanna label this throughput if you were, if you were sampling, because that would not be correct. Any other questions? All right, let's go back to where we were. Okay. So we're going to switch gears now and we're going to build a second Grafana dashboard that instead of looking at the time series is going to look at the tree structure. Um, this is powerful uh, because you can't really get this with metrics, right? That's the beauty of traces. You start to get a, a top, topology of your system. Um, yeah, so now we're going to venture into that territory. So get this picture back in your mind. Uh, each span can have zero or more children. Um, the root span obviously has no parents. Um, each span has a parent span ID that points to the span ID of the parent and the root has a, a null parent span ID. So if we were to query um, a trace, a given trace, we use an uh, explicit trace ID here and started getting the span IDs and the parent span IDs out. I mean, this is what it looked like. It's just a list of numbers. And I don't know about you, but like my brain can't make sense of that. That doesn't really <laughs> tell me anything. Um, but we can use SQL to make sense of this. To do that, first I've got to make sure you know how to count to 10 in SQL, all right? So you may think, uh, select one, all right? I've, count, I've counted to one, that seems easy enough, right? Uh, if I wanna count to two, you know, select one, union, select two. I've counted to two, great. Uh, I can continue that pattern to 10, and I've got 10 rows that count to 10. Uh, another way to do it was to use, would be to use like the values clause and do it that way, but hopefully we can all admit that these are gross. <laughs> Nobody wants to do this, right? Uh, and if you're familiar with Postgres, you may know the, uh, the generate series function uh, we're going to consider that cheating for now. Uh, that's, that's the nice way to do it. 
right? So, ooh, uh, you know, if we wanted to count to a million, nobody's going to do it that way. That's just gross. So how can we do it? Uh, recursion. Um, is everyone familiar with recursion? Or, uh, this is a lot of text, but recursion is when a body of code executes itself to solve its problem, right? So a function can call itself, um, a query can call itself. Uh, it's a way of doing looping without a for loop, without a while loop, right? It's about taking a big problem and broke it on, breaking it into smaller instances of the same problem to solve the problem. So you may or may not have known that SQL uh, can be recursive. And the syntax looks like this. This with, this is a um, common table expression. And you use the recursive keyword here to say this is a recursive common table expression, aliased as X. And the pattern is you'll have a query union with another query. And the second query is going to reference X. So it's referencing itself. And how this works is the first query is the initialization step. It's where you start in the recursion. And the second query is the iterative step. And then finally, outside, you can reference the results of all of the recursion. So if you want to count to 10 in recursive SQL, you have the with recursive CTE. You start with one, you union all, you refer to X, uh, so you're looking at the previous iteration and you take the previous iteration's number and add one to it and that's this iteration's number. And then finally, you're going to uh, return the results. But there's one problem with this query and it's the first rule of recursive SQL. Don't forget to stop. If you were to run this, it would either run forever or eventually, you know, throw a, um, throw some sort of like stack overflow problem. So what do we add? We add a where clause to the second part of the recursive CTE where the number is you know, less than 10 and that lets us stop iterating. And we get exactly what we want. So this is just counting, but you can use recursion to explore tree structures and graphs for that matter. So we've got this picture in our mind. Uh, this is how we're going to start our recursion. We're going to find a span in each trace to start with. So we're going to filter on the spans, filter on the time. Uh, we're going to filter on a service and a span name. And we'll find a bunch of samples, you know, a bunch of spans in our time window of that operation. And that's where we're going to start in the trees. If we want to walk upstream in the tree structure, we, uh, we're going to use the results of the previous itera iteration where it's the same trace and where this iteration span ID is the previous iteration's parent span ID. All right, so we're going to look at spans from the same trace where this iteration's span ID is the previous iteration's parent span ID. And then we're going to go one more up and we'll say where this iteration span ID is the previous iteration's parent span ID. And in that way, we start here, we go up, we go up, looping recursively until we stop, which is, would be where the parent span ID is null. There's nothing, nothing else to match on. So you can do the same thing in the opposite direction. You can go downstream. And it's really easy. You take the same query and you just swap this relationship here. So you look where this span's span ID is the next uh, span's parent span ID. And you go downstream. Now, why, why, is this, why would you want to do this? You might say like, okay, I'm working on service X. Um, we just got pounded in production and we don't know where it's coming from. So that, then you would want to look upstream, right? Who's sending me requests? Uh, why are they sending more? Or let's say uh, I'm responsible for service X. Um, I'm getting the same workload, but now they're running more slowly. Uh, why? 
you may want to look downstream and say, something in, in my stack is running more slowly now than it was before. Show me everything that's downstream of me. All right, so we're going to build a table that looks like this. Go back into Grafana and go back into the demo folder and swap over to Workshop 2. Right. Uh, and in Workshop 2, we, we have added this, these two pickers up here. You can pick the service and you can pick the span name within that service. And it's going to filter the whole dashboard on that selection. Okay, so don't freak out. <laughs> We're going to break this down. This right here is, the, is where we start. Um, we're going to look at the span table. We're going to filter by the time window. We're going to filter by this dollar service uh, ties us to the picker for the service name and the dollar span ties us to the picker for the span name. Um, we're going to get the trace ID, span ID, parent span ID, um, service name, span name, the duration, and we're going to count. So we're going to start the counting at zero. So that's where our recursion starts. And what we're going to do right here is we're going to take the span for each iterative step, look at the previous step where we're in the same trace. And uh, this step's span ID is the parent of the previous. So we're walking up the tree, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to increment the distance by one. So we know uh, distance one, we're directly called the one we, so we uh, selected on. Distance two was the parent of that. Distance three is the parent of that. And we're going to pull all those out. We're going to throw out distance zero, which is the one we picked. And we're going to get the P99 percent percentiles, uh, P95 percentiles. All right, so go over here. Go into our panel and enable this query. And hit apply. And if it's set to six hours, change it to five minutes. <laughs> All right, so we're going to look at the digit service. We've said a lot about the digit service. And we'll look at the slash uh, operation, the slash span name. This is where the requests are coming into the digit service. So we can see upstream of the slash, uh, we're being called by the generator service and the lower service. And we're getting called directly by the HTTP GET spans and indirectly by these um, operations here. i pause for a second. Any questions? OK. Now we're going to do the same thing, but downstream. So this is the same exact query. The only thing we've done here is swap this relationship. So we're going to jump over here, hit edit, enable it, hit apply. All right, so now we know what is calling this uh, operation and what it is calling, right? upstream and downstream. But my problem is I still can't really visualize this. This is a table. It's got, a, got some numbers in it, but it doesn't paint a picture. So let's paint a picture. Uh, there's a, uh, a tool in Grafana called the uh, node graph, and that's what we're going to use. And the node graph requires two queries. One query to identify the distinct nodes in the graph and one query to identify the edges. So we're going to build a picture of upstream spans. And first, we're going to start with um, a query to identify the nodes that are upstream. And each node in this picture is going to be an operation. And each edge is going to be a call. So we're going to take the same recursive query that we had before for upstream. Uh, but we're going to do a distinct on the concatenation of the service name and the span ID to give it an ID. So this Grafana widget needs an ID for each node. 
uh, and we're going to use the service name and the span name as titles and subtitles. Now you can't really see anything um, yet, but we're going to go ahead and enable it. So we have two queries here. Uh, go to the first one. It's got this comment in it that says nodes. Enable that one and hit apply. And now you see we have nodes, but we don't have any edges. So let's get the edges in here. Same query as before, uh, although the recursive query has changed a little bit. So with an edge, it's not enough to know one span. You need to know two spans. You need the start and the end, right? So on the first iteration, we actually don't have enough information to draw an edge. So we're going to start with a null child service name and a null child span name. On the second and following iterations, we know the prior iteration and this iteration, so we're able to draw a, a line between the two. So you'll notice that we've got P for parent, we've got the parent service name and the parent span name, and X is the previous iteration, so we've got the child's service name and the child's span name. Uh, so the Grafana widget needs an ID for the edge, and then it needs the ID of the source node and the ID of the target node. And with those three pieces of information, it knows how to draw that. So you'll see the source and the target are the concatenation of the span, uh, service and span names as before. And now we're doing the concatenation of all four of those elements to give it a, an ID. And we're doing distinct on it. All right, so let's draw this picture. We're going to go to the second query, which will give us the edges. And we're going to hit apply. And let's zoom out a little bit. So we've looked at the last five minutes, which we know from the previous dashboards, probably between 1,000 and 2,500 traces. And we've looked at all of the distinct traces in that time window that are upstream that, and we've looked at all of those traces. We found the ones, the spans that start in the, um, the digit slash, and we've, we've walked every single one of those traces and found the distinct call paths that came from the outside of the system and went through this digit slash uh, span name. Right, And so now we've got a picture of what all of those look like. Uh, we can see this is the one that we filtered on. We can see it's being called by the lower service and the generator service. We can see that the lower service eventually gets called by the generator service. And we can see inside the generator service. And this generator generate is where the requests enter the system. So now we have a dynamic real-time map of not just our service dependencies, but our operations within those services. So it's like an, an x-ray of, of all the services at once, right? Um, and this is actually an Easter egg. You might want to, you might say, well, why on earth is the lower service calling the digit service? There's zero reason why. It's a purposeful bug in there for, for us to find uh, and dig through and try to go uh, fix. Questions? Cool. Okay, so let's do the same thing for downstream. Uh, we're going to do the nodes first. It's the same query as before. We're just, you know, we swapped that one relationship to go downstream instead of upstream. So you can go over to the, uh, the dashboard, enable or edit this one. Go to the first query, enable it, and hit apply. And then we've got a second query for the edges again, as before. This is the exact same query as we did on the last one, except for that one relationship change.
hit apply and so now we know we filtered on digit slash this shows us the map upstream of it and this shows us the map downstream so we know that digit forward slash calls digit process digit and digit random digit and uh, digit render digit and we also know that process digit calls extra process digit so between the two of these you now know in the last five minutes over the you know between one and two thousand traces in the last five minutes every trace every request that went through the digit forward slash you know chunk of code we know the distinct call tree above it and below it everything uh everything that went through that um that's pretty cool so if we combine the previous dashboard and this one the previous dashboard showed us that there was this performance issue and it showed us the exact operation where that performance issue was right now we can go over to this dashboard and we can filter on the the operation that we identified in the last and we know exactly um, what's upstream of it exactly what's downstream of it so we know if we optimize this thing what's it going to impact hopefully for the positive all right any questions we're at like just under an hour we've got about 15 minutes um, any questions about the workshop the demo the queries um, also any thoughts I'd love to hear uh, after seeing this are there any things that you think of that maybe we could answer with SQL and traces yes That's right. So there's not a danger of like circular infinite recursion there, right? Because you can only have one parent and child, so you shouldn't, we're not having to twist that all the way back to the tree. Does that sound right? That's right. So the question uh, for the recording is about um, the node graph and the recursion and whether or not there are any loops in it. And so the, na the nature of the traces, um, at least in this system, is that none of our requests are going to go through the same chunk of code uh, twice and especially within a, um, a given trace each span is going to have one parent and unless somehow yeah I don't see how you could have a, a span that's calling a span that's already happened yeah. so I think by nature of the data we're not in danger of an infinite loop Anything else? So is that edge in the graph? Was that just an aggregation of all the different spans underneath? So it was not only really one overall trace, but really it's thousands, yeah. Right. So we're doing the distinct uh, let's let's go back to the the query. So you'll see right here we're using distinct here. So we're finding all of the distinct paths. So it's not necessarily the case that any one request would follow all of this. Yeah. It's actually not the case. We know that some of them go down this path and some of them go down this path. But we're, we're building a picture of all of the distinct paths. Yes. Yeah. So I know the, this widget, you know, I'm not super familiar with it. I know there's a way to color these nodes. Um, so I, I think you could compute, you know, the throughput or the latency like we did before and then use that to color these. Yeah. I'd love to see a way to color or uh, like impact the size of the edges as well. But I don't think this can do that, this particular UI widget. Yeah, right. I was sending some feature requests to Grafana. What else?
Uh, so PromScale is open source. Um, you can download it for free, and we have an associated APM dashboard for Grafana. Uh, uh, it's also free. Um, we don't really have any enterprise features, and um, yeah, so th that's what this is about. You, you download it, you've got this data in the database, and unless you've, you're, you know, strong with SQL uh, and have some imagination, you don't really know what to do with it, right? Uh, I actually built this for myself when I was, I'm on the, an engineer on the team building PromScale, um, and, I, you know, I needed some demo data. To, to play around with to make sure that my schema worked and uh, make sure these queries actually worked. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's what, where it came from. Go ahead. Uh, does it support any other database servers? Just Postgres. Yeah. And for open telemetry, would you have like a prom scale exporter? And that would send it to your like, Postgres instance? Or how would you? Yeah, let me go back to, so the, the question is, do you have a PromScale exporter? And so what we have is uh, a PromScale connector, which is written in Go, it's kind of like an agent. Um, so you would have your traces forwarded to that and it knows how to load them into the database. Uh, it also supports Prometheus metrics, so you can have, metrics and traces forwarded to PromScale and put in the same database. So what I haven't done in this and I hope to expand on is let's put both in the database, metrics and traces. And now with SQL, you can correlate the two and build something even better, you know, even deeper insights. What is the line from the Jaeger to the connector? Is it sending traces? So Jaeger, uh, so the PromScale connector implements the API that Jaeger needs to get traces. So if you want, actually right here, when you look at Jaeger in the, the system you're running, it's actually going through PromScale to get these traces to visualize. So PromScale is the back end for Jaeger. Is that always the case or you can just configure Jaeger that way? You can configure Jaeger that way. Uh, and obviously you can you can connect straight to the database with any Postgres driver. So if you prefer, you know, Tableau or some other um, data analytics tool uh, that's fully supported as standard Postgres SQL queries work with all of it. They're in the same database, uh, they're in different tables uh, and different schemas, although the schemas may change soon uh, or kind of bring them together. But yeah, you'll have certain tables that uh, the metrics land in and certain tables that the traces land in. And then based on the metadata that you attach to e either metrics or traces, you can correlate the two. We have exemplars, yes. Uh, and actually on the roadmap, we have planned to do logs, open telemetry logs and uh, metrics, but you know, that's all down the line. <laughs> Good questions, anything else? Any ideas, like what else would you like to see That's a really good question. So the question is around, um, you know, we give uh, we 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 give a way to store the data, and with SQL we give a way to query the data. But you know, what's what's in the box, what's out of the box, right? Um, so that's that's the beauty of SQL. I mean, it's a it's a Turing complete language for data analytics. So the 
The cool thing is we're giving you the data in a form with a language to go with it where you can answer whatever question um, comes to your mind. But again, you have to like no SQL, right? So I think part of that is in these APM dashboards where we, we give you like Grafana dashboards that are already pre-built. Um, I don't know what we might come up with in the future, but f for now, you know, it's workshops and demos and blog posts and... This is good feedback to all the cars. That's what he's looking at me. Uh, I'm also from the team. And this is kind of a debate about having technology to a lot, like to what extent the video is going to be and some kind of UI, for example. But we're not sure, because for us, in a part of, of our thinking is through Grafana, you can have like UI for free. <laughs> And, and it's very powerful, but what you're saying is very true, is that like, you need to be able to write this thing for your own app, so the cost is really difficult. So we don't have an answer for that, but just your comment is somebody really telling. <laughs> 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 well, I know what you have to say this year, so I was curious what happened. If you find out info about it, just tell us what to do. We can keep talking. I just wanted to put this up because we have a... Um, a little Google Forms survey uh, where, you know, it's like three minutes. If you don't mind going and, and giving us some feedback, that'll help us, uh, you know, figure out what to build, you know. Um, anything else? Cool. Uh, so now you have a running trace generating playground on your system. Uh, take it home, um, play around with it. If you have any questions, uh, Timescale has a community Slack. You can jump in there. Uh, there's a PromScale channel. You can find me uh, or anyone else in there with a the little tiger logo next to their name. Um, you can hit us up on our GitHub repo for the demo. Um, file issues, contribute, that'd be great. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much.